Hi everyone, today I'm so excited to introduce you to a new friend of mine, Kelly Morris. She is an Australian designer, founder and creator of Flow Yoga Wear. I love her products. I met her at a, a Mind Body Spirit Festival and, um, and we just started chatting um, as usual. That happens when I go to events. Um, I really <laughs> love her products and and then also when I find out that really her, her shop really specializes in this book, Bohemian Yoga and Fashion Garments that are designed, printed, and made with love in sunny Queensland, Australia, which is, you know, great to support our Australian businesses. And I also love what, hey. she, <laughs> love what she had on her website about, it's about creating clothing that will inspire and encourage women of all shapes and sizes to move their beautiful bodies. So I'm really excited to talk to you today. I mean, both about being uh, women creative and about women uh, in business, um, uh, also particularly in the Australian business. Um, and also like very, like I want, I, I heard the story from your first hand, but I think it would be great to, to get my listeners to hear your story about creating flow. So welcome to my yeah. show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so first of all, like I will put some photos um, on this blog post slash podcast so people can see your product. Because when I first saw your products, I know it's yoga, flowy wear, you know, it can be exercise. <laughs> it can, it flowy could be, wear. I love it. <laughs> like, it could be like, it's very feminine, it's very beautiful and obviously suitable for yoga or people exercising or just casual wear. But it's a little bit different. Yeah. And can you describe it for us? How would you, how would you, like, people say, like, oh, what do you do? You say, oh, I, I design things. And how would you introduce yourself and tell us your journey, how you create <laughs> flow? <laughs> I, you know what? I still have absolutely no idea how to answer that question. You know, when people, when people ask me what I do, I still, I still have to stop and, and go, um, well, I design, you know, yoga wear, yogi inspired wear, and I really still haven't figured out a good, you know, tagline to <laughs> to say what it is I do. But I think, I think probably um, it's uh, uh, why don't I just talk about the the journey and how it started because that's kind of integral to what the product actually is so I discovered yoga in my mid-30s so I came to yoga really really late but um but really fell in love with it immediately and and just came away from my first yoga class absolutely beaming smiling just feeling so calm um so the the love the, the love affair with yoga started there um but the yoga clothing came a little bit later. Um, I was going to yoga classes and seeing lots of people um, wearing just beautiful leggings and went out to try and find my own pair of beautiful <laughs> leggings and just couldn't, A, couldn't find anything for my size and shape that I felt beautiful in. And I found the patterns and the colours to be really generic. There wasn't anything for me that just was different and that somehow explained me uh, because that's I love clothing that I can wear that I feel like explains me a bit to the to the world that I'm presenting to so um, that's where it started and it, it was I just started kind of having this dream, right? Having this dream about designing my own pair of leggings. At that time, I was working in a fabric printing factory. So I had a good understanding of the industry, um, but I'd never, you know, the garment industry, but I'd never really done anything for myself. Um, and I had this moment in a yoga class in Shavasana where as I say in the website, the light bulb just went on and I was thinking, you know, I was, I was, I was not being calm and meditating and letting my thoughts just come and go. This thought just kind of, stick, kind of like rushed up into my head and, and uh, I was like, why, why don't I, why don't I create my own pair of leggings? And why don't I, I don't know, use some photos that I've taken because I have an, um, a bit of an interest in photography and I love texture and I love colour, um, the texture of a tree bark or the, the texture of a tile floor, you know, all those kind of things I'm really drawn to and I've always been drawn to in photography. So I thought, why don't I just 
oh, I don't know, why don't I just put something weird on a pair of leggings? Because I had access to the machinery to do that. Um, but then it stopped there. So I had this dream and this has something, been something for me all my life. I have this dream, but it stayed as a dream for a long time and it didn't really do anything. Um, and then I hurt my back. And I hurt my back quite badly. And I was literally confined to the floor of my living room for only a couple of days, two or three days. I just couldn't move. The, the, the best place for me to be was on flat, hard surface. So I set up um, in my living room. Uh, my partner went off to work and I just stayed at home and I just stopped. I stopped my day job for that couple of days, which means that I had nothing else to do. I had nothing else to think about. I had no concerns about what I was doing at work. And in that three days, flow was really born. In that three days, I'd never been on Instagram before. And I thought, right, I'm going to start a flow yoga wear account page because I already had the name. I already, I knew that I wanted to call her but flow. But no legging whatsoever, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> 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 I love it. <laughs> yeah, and it just and in that three days, so I started my Flow Instagram account, um, and one of my first posts was actually the Eleanor Roosevelt quote: "Do mm -hmm. one thing every day that scares you." And when I went back to work a couple of days later, I um, I started building Flow. So I started asking all my fabric suppliers for samples of fabric that would be good for active wear. I was starting to trawl through all my photos for, for designs that I thought might look good on a pair of leggings. I started investigating where to get a, a legging pattern, uh, a garment pattern and how that would fit me. And, and it all went from there. And I really truly believe that it was that three days where I was, I had nothing else to do and I couldn't do anything else. Cause my, it, it was almost like my back, told me like it sounds a bit weird but I it was almost like I felt my back said stop Kylie stop and turn that dream into actualize that dream as opposed to just having it up in your head which you do a lot you just have these beautiful dreams but nothing happens with them um so that's where that's where Flo started she started she started there and she started yeah she started there and since then Flo has become I want every woman to feel beautiful and it doesn't matter what size, what shape you are. I want you to be a walking piece of art and my designs, I hope reflect personality types, you know, and something mm -hmm. different and unique and, and out of the order ordinary, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So wow. that's it. <laughs> what a powerful story. I was totally in dreamland because there's so many things from, <laughs> From, in a way like um, from my like sort of more the coaching or business perspective because one of the things a lot of people say is that you've got to start before you're ready as in you know you started a flow yoga page and yet actually I assume at that point you have no products <laughs> but you have the idea and you know that's your dream and you just do it you because no think, <laughs> <laughs> no Nothing, right? But you know, if you absolutely, make a, yeah, if you make an account, you kind of tell the universe that okay, I'm in business now because I created the account, right? So you you kind of like you showed up in your way, and and I think it's an incredible story. So we'll start before yeah. you're ready. A lot of people yeah. talk about it, and also you know it's about progress, not perfection. And if you if you if you don't like do something, it, it's not going to gain momentum. And then if you people hear the story, especially if they're not watching the video, if they're listening, they can really sense the passion when you start from, I don't know, but I this idea and then lying on the floor three days. But then later on, when you talk about now, I want everybody walking with leggings and be themselves and beautiful. That passion, the energy have shifted. That it's like, I believe yeah. you can find something you're curious and interested, but passion actually comes later. Absolutely. Passion comes yeah, with right. some action, some exploration, because it could turn out to be maybe photography, maybe not leggings. It could be something else or teaching yoga. I don't know. 
Yeah. But if you didn't take action to explore yeah. further, adding your, from curiosity, interest, hobby, to become, you know, get the skills, get the connection, taking small steps of action and create a business, you actually cannot fulfill your passion, which is doing what Flow is doing right now. So, I mean, for a lot of people who, who ask Absolutely. those questions about, I want to find my passion. I mean, sometimes you don't find it you need to actually go and take action in order to get yourself in it. Like, I, I think that's like really right. important for people because I think a lot of people who may be right. sitting here thinking, you know, I have this dream, but I have a very stable day job. I don't know what to do. And it's not about choosing <laughs> as well, because it's about, you know, you can start no, your account, you can start looking at patterns and fabric and you don't have to quit your day job immediately. And some people do you can have a choice but i think it's about taking small no. steps i mean you were saying no. like looking at fabric taking a photo so that all takes time but then the thing is that if yep. people have seen your product in the festival in the first thing that struck me i think it was a few years ago when you started doing body mind spirit festival, yeah is that your clothing does come across quite different like first of all, mm. there's a lot of patterns, and every time I saw your product, <laughs> there is there's not a there's not a single black legging in the whole store. Sorry, <laughs> but it's also um if they're changing all the time. I think every time I see you, like every year, I don't mean mm. every festival per se. You seem to have yeah, yeah, like yeah. new designs and things that keep flowing. It's not the the best seller, the blacks and the purple is always there, or you know, it's always changing. And, yep. and, and so it's, yep. it's really fun and it just somehow yes. it stands out. And, and I love how, you know, you said your back sort of told you you need to work on this and it turns out to be such amazing journey. So I, I think I really love your story and I think people can sense it, how, you know, things can change so much, you know, um, from a dream in your head into a real business and, yeah. Um, and a lot of people love your product and I love some of your tank tops. Like I love some of those yeah. things like Wonder Women or Heavily Meditated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. And you know, it's really, it's really interesting that, that idea around, you know, doing something when you're not ready or, 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 or passion or all those things, because it was only a year and a half ago that I stopped working my day job as well. And the only reason I stopped working my day job was because I was made redundant. Mm. So I didn't, I didn't choose that. And, but I'm so, so glad that it happened. Um, because it's a, it is a big, it's a big thing to give away that security to do something that you love like I knew this is and this is an interesting thing too because I knew that Flo was working mm -hmm. already right mm -hmm. I knew that people loved her but it was just that extra little um bit of faith that I didn't have in my in myself or my brand you know that just that I just needed that little extra you know just hold on have the faith and go for it that I didn't mm. quite, I didn't quite have, even though she was doing quite well. Mm -hmm. And uh, life decided for me, which I'm so, I'm actually in, in hindsight, so grateful for. Um, but it's a very, I understand that it's a very hard thing to do that switch from having something part time to going full time into it. You know, the, um, I've got this lovely little story about the word hobby. Um, my partner and I were traveling around Morocco a couple of years ago and we, um, we were walking around the town of Essaouira with this lovely um, Moroccan lady who was kind of like our, our tour guide for the day. And she told us, she told us that hobby is an Arabic word that means to do the thing you love. Hmm. And that's always stayed with me because I'm like, Oh yeah, I don't, that, that's, I think why I was able to really flourish with flow because I wasn't doing it originally to make money, to make a career. I was doing it just because I loved it. 
Mm. And that's where it started. And that's why I was able to keep going. And that's why I was able to keep designing. And as you said, bring out new designs all the time, because I was just, I just really loved it. And I took the pressure off myself at the beginning to make it, if you will. Mm. And that removing, like for me, this is just my own story, but for me, removing the hustle and removing the pressure at the early stages, the really kind of sensitive early stages really helped Mm -hmm. because I just, I didn't have that, I didn't have that thing around my head telling me to push, 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 push. That came later and I already had all of that beautiful creative relaxed like just doing it because I love to support me when I did start to want to hustle but in the beginning I didn't want to hustle I just wanted to do it because I loved it Mm. um and it's morphed into something else now um yeah but just just so interesting I was actually at a um I did the I, I I listened to Elizabeth Gilbert talk recently about um powerful women right and she her words to 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 us everyone in the room were we associate these words with women um like strong and fierce and sassy and (laughs) you know all of these kind of words and she just said i just want to put out a new word that i think is i think should be the thing that business women are striving for and it is relaxed and I just, I just heard this word relax and my whole body relaxed and I went, oh my gosh. And she said, you know, the most powerful person in the room or is usually the most relaxed and from a state of relaxation and from a state of non-stress, you can, like, you can just fly. And I really feel that to be true. And that's what I gave myself at the beginning of Flo's life is I was so relaxed. It was, you know, nothing. I didn't, I didn't need to achieve anything quickly. I didn't need to achieve anything really at all. I just was doing, was making leggings for women, going to markets and just having a grand old time. (laughs) So, yeah. The hustle, the, the, the hustle, what I call hustle is, is now, but it's a good hustle because I'm so committed mm. and, um, and I still love it and nothing's changed. Yeah. What a beautiful story. And I, I think you totally got sand for me because a couple of things happened in my life that I was least relaxed in my life today. I was so stressed out <laughs> about different things and um i mean when we're recording this so this is going to go out i mean i often do podcasts quite in advance a couple of months if not three months in advance especially i'm heavily pregnant right now people yeah. can't see um so we're in a time that we're <laughs> self-isolating and um and but yesterday that something came up at work and i was super stressed out and you were got sent because it's true the feminine energy is actually receptive and relaxed and from mm-hmm. that space mm-hmm we really can go in and create because if you're Absolutely. stressed out if you're up here you can you can you see the problem but you cannot see the solution you see you want yeah. to design but you have no creative ideas and yeah. it's so important and i would just not in that say yesterday i have to breathe and then meditate yeah. like <laughs> I, you know the thing is, I, the thing about being in this um, business or work in this field is that i know this stuff sometimes you catch yourself slipping and that's okay yes you know okay. i just remind myself to breathe but at least i know i don't get in the downward spot i notice that yes. oh my god what yes, am i doing? Not, yeah yeah so that was lovely but i love what you said and i also um, <laughs> referring to elizabeth gilbert you know in her book big magic to really talk about that point where she loved writing and she made a commitment to her writing that i'm going to work as an a- waitress to support you so i can do my best writing not the other way around. So many people would say, oh, I want to be a writer. Yeah. I want to get writing to pay my bills. And that's great. I mean, it wouldn't be lovely to do what you love and use that to pay your mm. bills. But sometimes if mm. you take that step um, so prematurely, you get so stressed out and 
it may not be the best way to nurture your skill or your foundation. And so when you talked about how you were so relaxed and you just loved it and the universe decided, okay, it's time and you should, you know, maybe more focus in flow and, and therefore make you yeah. redundant or whatever, it became such a natural yeah. path. And, and I yeah. think a lot of people yeah. took a weekend course and, and decided, I want to be a healer by Monday. And it's mm-hmm. great. You go and practice <laughs> and do all this stuff, but maybe it, it takes time to deepen. Like in my, in my book that I'm working on, I think a lot of times that we discover, become aware about what we want to do, what we want to be, and then we go there and start to learn and start to develop. But then the third stage before we truly get to master something is a deepening stage where mm. it may take for some people, maybe a couple of years, some people two, two decades, I don't know, to yeah. deepen yeah. into where you need to be so that you can master what you're doing and bring right. out more. And I'm sure in your relaxed state, that's when your design starts to flow. Um, oh, totally. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The, the relax with relaxation for me comes everything. It comes the ability to, yeah, to create and to create fully with no pressure of having to do it by yesterday, you know, um, but even emails, even though, even like the everyday tasks, emailing, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, emailing or paying bills or, you know, it, I don't know that it's, it's really changed quite quickly. Um, my general everyday state and it just makes me feel it actually it does make me feel much more confident and much more powerful in in where in in where I can go with flow as well um well so let's get there because you know from you were running it like a hobby and it was doing really well you kind of can see it that it can become like a bigger business can support you fully and so obviously moving from a hobby to a full-time business you obviously have to put in slightly maybe more business z head or whatever way you call it (laughs) so how 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 did it work for you and do you need to now do something to remind yourself that okay i need to take time off or keep my creative well full like how do you balance it now because you can no longer call it a hobby so how do you manage the two now the okay, side so versus one, the creative side. Right, right. And okay, so firstly, my beautiful partner um, started really getting um, absorbed in running the business with me about a year and a half ago too, basically at the same time that we both lost our jobs. So um, that had already started happening, but then um, I, I wasn't having to do everything alone and my partner has has he has a business um head as well so that made it a lot easier Mm -hmm. um and it made it easier when you have your partner kind of telling you what to do sometimes because you need you need just that extra I, I suppose, when things start getting so big. So I was, we, we were able to kind of, or he, I was able to lean on him a little bit to do um, a lot of stuff. And uh, in conjunction with that, uh, um, I just started, I just started prioritising my day a little bit more. Um, and it kind of was something that happened, started to happen quite naturally that, um, my tasks were prioritized and I gave myself permission not to, not to do everything, <laughs> if you get what I mean. Mm-hmm. So I... It, yeah, it, in the beginning of flow, it was like every email e- email I got had to be answered straight away. Um, every bill had to be paid immediately. Uh, it, it, every um, I had to release new designs every you know three months, or I wasn't keeping up with like the fashion standard of having a seasonal change in in things. Um, and now it's become. It, it, the world's not going to end if I don't answer that email today or if I don't get back to that person on Instagram, I will do it, but the the world's not going to end if I don't do it straight away. So while I still, there's still pressure, while I still feel that there's a pressure, it's a, 
it's a more manageable pressure that everything will get done, but for my own relaxation and for my own sanity, I have, I have designated the list of priorities of my day. And if your email or if that, or if that project or that thing doesn't fit into what I've got planned for my day, then that's okay for it to slide and go to another day. Um, I hope I'm answering the question. I don't even yeah, know. Yes, <laughs> because, you know right now. A lot of people have a really strange assumption or fantasy that creative people are pretty like a mess. Like actually the best creative I've met have, have the ducks in order. Like they are creative. So like Stephen King, he write first thing in the morning. Then he finish around lunchtime. Right. Like, or right. like a lot of directors and producers I met before, the most creative people who are successful. Actually, it's not they let the day just gone by and flow and wait for the news. And, no, no, no. <laughs> None of that. It's actually, they take, it, they take the creative work very um, professionally, as in, so they make mm -hmm. sure they set up the time, the space, and like yeah. you said, like priority, because you know, okay, if you have to pay the bill, if you have to do the tax return, you have to sort it out so that you can free up the yeah. time so you can create your design. So it's more like right. prioritizing, compartmentizing, yeah. and sometimes delegating to other people. So you actually have yeah. to be at least organized. If you don't do everything yourself, you have to organize someone to do it for you at a certain time. But because yeah. of that, you can have your creative freedom because you know these mm. two hours, I can really just relax and do nothing maybe, but whatever. Yeah, do nothing or everything, you know, or whatever everything. happens. Yeah. But if you didn't pay really a important. bill, it's here, and you're like, oh my God, yeah, I haven't paid right. for a bill. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. there's always yeah. a time. And, and yeah. I think like that, I really like to take this point home because a lot of people consider being creative, a business person are like, you know, very different. No, actually, the right. way, being very creative, you actually still have to be a professional creative. Mm, so, yes, 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 and, yes. They've got to be interchangeable. Yeah, yeah. It's very important, and and that's actually about nurturing your creativity as well, so that you can, mm. you know, you have the space and energy. So, right. I definitely love it. So, I I want to ask another question about you know looking back. Like, okay, so it sounds like it's all very dreamy, amazing, incredible <laughs> story, but there must be something if you look back. What could be like the lessons or you would you have done anything oh. differently like what could be like the yes. craziest stuff yeah um i think and it's only it's only come to light now actually um in the last kind of couple of weeks uh, so flow um i love being around women i love talking to women i love connection like that so flow has really been built predominantly on me packing up the van <laughs> with, with my partner's help and going to markets and festivals. And that's been the way that I've built Flow for years. It really has been the very main primary way I've built Flow and my customer base um, is going out to the people. And I, while we have a, had a website, have a website, and while social media was always a thing that I did kind of like kind of don't like I've kind of got a love hate relationship or I had a love hate relationship with it um it was like you know like the the typical salesperson get out there and 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 meet your clients face to face and now I think the biggest thing that I would have done differently um is I would have understood that the online presence, the online shopping, social media, Facebook, Instagram were actually a lot more important than for long-term success than I gave. Yeah, I didn't give them the weight that they really required. And I'm seeing that now, right? Because festivals are canceled, can't be outdoors, can't be at a market. So all of that uh, income stream revenue, you know, hype, keep flow going, all of that that I was relying on that I just never assumed would go away <laughs> has gone away. So, yeah, that would probably be the biggest thing that I would have done differently. Probably the, yeah, 
yeah, that would have been that would have been the thing that I would have done differently. I would have um, I would have spent money and I would have spent time and I would have got help because I'm not I'm well, I'm not very technologically savvy. So the whole website thing, you know, I can do it, but it's 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 hard, you know, putting products and doing yeah, a website, mean, blah blah. I want to say not all is lost though, because I think no, like, of course, no. like as in it's interesting. Sometimes we like our oh, pinch ourselves that we should have done this differently or blah blah blah. Yeah, maybe more um, being in preparation and pipeline would be better. But on the other hand, now you actually really have a standout brand because a lot of people who start out on social media often they don't really know the brand because they haven't yeah. been in the trenches. Like they right, don't know right. what the customer really need and like and how they're like. I think you, you, in the other hand, like you can say what is advantage and disadvantage, but on the other hand, I really see that you really understand a customer. You're with the women. Yeah. You were, I, I call in a call on the trenches interview with people. So <laughs> now when you have to put it back online, you, you can, you can strike very quickly because you know, these are my customers. True. That's what they like. Um, that's True. my brand. True. This is working. That's not working because this is not us. That really helped because yeah. there's a lot of noise in the marketplace and to stand out, it's quite hard in, in some sense. Mm. So even you may have all this strategy and technology and all that stuff, but sometimes it still comes down to your product and your right. the energy behind it. So that's that. And, and also mm. the funny thing is that I actually... Um, know you first like your product first before discovery online because there was something quite memorable about your products so it was mm. very easy the other way around because if i go and search online there would be thousands of similar title right. could be right. i will be right. lost but because i how remember yeah. how, i remember one of the things that says that i really want to get that t-shirt called heavily <laughs> heavily meditated and when I just look it up, that came to you because that was something it stands out. So I thought yeah. it was really interesting how everything has. But of course, we all yeah. should do like, I mean, I'm the same when I was working with people. I say, yes, you, 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 if, it's, if online is completely not for you, don't, don't sweat about it. But if you're okay yeah. with that option, multiple streams of income and multiple, you know, platform, it's great. Physical mm -hmm. versus online. So, but I mean how interesting how things turn out so your back you know was interesting yeah, and, and then and now this right right and i and, and hearing you talk back at me about it i'm i'm actually really um i am I'm, I'm actually i actually feel really lucky that i that i wanted that face to face connection and that was that has been such a big part of flow because yeah standing out just you know launching a website and then somehow bringing people to you and bringing your target customer and, 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 you know, that must be so hard. <laughs> that must yeah. be so, that must be so hard. And gosh, I've built like, and I say this, I say this to any, any woman who kind of comes up to me and is like, I want to start a business. I just, I, we are humans and we need, you know, online is great. Online is great. But we're humans and we want that real connection. We want that real, yeah, face-to-face -face interaction. Mm. And I think, think that's hopefully in the future, I think, you know, I was, I was seeing even at the markets, just the regular weekend markets that I was going to um, and that I will go to again. <laughs> don't, don't fear, everyone. I will be back. <laughs> um, but it, it was just so lovely to have those really meaningful deep connections that you would never have you just wouldn't have as a business online mm. and I can imagine that would feel really isolating mm. sometimes and I'm so grateful that sure I have felt periods of isolation because in when you're in business basically by yourself it is isolating but um, I'm so grateful that I've had those uh, and that I will, we will have those festivals and those markets to go to again that give me a real feeling for who my customer is and they give me energy back, you know, mm -hmm. so I keep going. Like every, after every month, you talked about Mind, Body, Spirit, discovering me at the, fest, the Mind, Body, Spirit Festival. I would get such energy back from that festival, from meeting so many beautiful people that would spur me onwards and would give me the 
the the reason to continue Mm. as well and that must be very hard online and I guess this is something that I'm going into now how do I how do I continue that feeling and how do I get energy back from my customer just purely being online so this is a brave new world I'm stepping into and just talking talking to you about it now it's actually quite exciting Mm. I guess you would discover new ways of connecting, maybe getting people to post the photos when they're done with right. the new leggings or like, right. you know, I think we will find ways to converge, but I do love what you, you, you emphasize is that it's so important to have both that, you know, you need to have the in-person connection. You, you, if you're passionate to see women wearing the clothes, like loving the body, you kind of need to see them doing it. Right. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> rather it's than just, just a snapshot on an Instagram, <laughs> that's good. But it's, I think we need both. But anyway, today mm. to wrap it up has been a really fun conversation. And if people are really like, excited to learn about your product and look at your design, I know you have yoga clothing, as I mentioned, leggings, but also some jewelry. So what's the best place to find you? Best place to find us at the moment is online, <laughs> www.flowyogawear.com. Yeah, we've, so we've got our, um, our beautiful leggings and our yogi-inspired tees. Um, but now I'm also starting to try and represent a couple of my, um, my friends' brands who also make their own beautiful things. So we now have a little jewel- jewellery line from my beautiful friend Tegan, who owns Soul Quartz. Her raw crystal jewellery is just amazing. So we have that in stock. We'll be getting some candles, some yoga mats. So I really want Flo to continue to expand, especially online, as a kind of a yoga one-stop shop. Mm. So um, stay tuned, everybody, because, yeah, there's lots of lovely... The time that this the, the, the COVID-19 kind of shutdown period is it's I'm relaxed and I've got nothing else to do and you know it's just like time for flow to go grow again and grow in different areas so we're exploring lots of new fun ideas at the moment too so yeah super exciting and I will put the link on the blog post as well so people can click on it and I'll put some my favorite photos <laughs> of yes, your, yes. You your product um and yes yeah, <laughs> so i'm um, kind of beautiful product so thank you so much for today and it was lovely to have my you my pleasure thank you thank you for thinking of flow <laughs>